with respect to external sector before we go into foreign exchange and all that we'll have to understand the law that regulates the foreign exchange okay there are a law that was enacted in the 1970s okay which was called as foreign, foreign exchange regulation act so the external sector whatever i told you okay export import conversion balance of payment foreign exchange reserve everything so they were all regulated by a law which was called as what foreign exchange regulation act okay this was during the time in the 1970s india was facing similar situation what sri lanka is facing so there was a shortage of dollars okay there was more outflow than inflow we were importing a lot we did not attract too much of investments our share markets were not developed to allow foreigners to come and invest here okay our exports were less our imports were more because we were dependent on even our basic needs like food okay we were dependent on foreign countries okay we were also needing this money for defense expenditures correct war with china war with pakistan happened 1960s 1970s okay this also increased our defense expenditure and defense we were dependent on import so because of all of this our import bills increased in addition to that oil prices also was increasing because of the middle eastern crisis all this added pressure on our external sector where we did not have enough reserves to meet our essential imports okay there was shortage of dollar frequently so this law was enacted during that time what is this law foreign exchange regulation act so under this law okay our foreign currency exchange was highly regulated so it was based on the uh, i mean it is based on the principle that whatever foreign currency is owned by individuals in india residents of india should be surrendered to the central bank of india rbi you understood if you own any foreign currency if you own any dollars you are supposed to deposit it with rbi if you have read the newspaper you might have read the same thing with respect to sri lanka also okay i think a week back last week there was an article saying that the central bank of sri lanka has asked all the exporters to deposit foreign currency within 180 days so who are going to have foreign currency who will have dollars in india who will have dollars in india will you have dollars will i have dollars no we won't do much trade with dollars let's say you are working abroad and then you come back having dollars that time you might have but majority of the people i mean who is going to have in india mainly the exporters alwa the exporters are the ones who will have dollars so whoever owns dollar investors etc anybody who is having dollars in india have to surrender it with the rbi because there is shortage of dollars there is scarcity of foreign currency therefore the foreign currency that is external sector was heavily regulated by government hence the word regulation everything was relating to external sector whatever i told you export import of services and of goods investments borrowings everything was regulated okay so you had to take permission from government or the rbi for any kind of transaction being done using foreign currency if you want to export you want to import you had to take permission actually import was banned except for a list of items okay there was a positive list rest all was banned you understood you could not import except for certain commodities that is where smuggling and all used to take place now you don't have to smuggle you want to buy you can purchase it online you can ask somebody to get there's no restriction as such you pay the duty you can get it correct today you want to buy anything you pay customs duty and you get it no problem no restrictions you can you buy iphone from us can you buy laptops from us yes there is no restrictions but back then it was not like that it was restricted you cannot get anything why you cannot get anything because you will spend dollars and dollars were 
precious because we needed dollars for essential imports. So under this regime, strict control of what? Of external sector. Strict control of external sector. Exchange, use of dollar for import, everything. I mean, see, this is a general understanding. Nobody is going to ask you features for you to appreciate this. So everything that is de dealt under external sector, what I told you, were completely controlled, strict control of external sector by the government. So the government had prohibited all transactions except those permitted by RBI. By default, everything is banned. So that is why people used to smuggle goods into India because normal route was not available. Even if somebody wanted to bring something and pay customs duty, they were not allowed. That's why Dawood Ibrahim, etc., those people flourished in our western coast. Okay, because of smuggling. They used to smuggle imported goods. Remember, if you wanted to get imported chocolate, I don't know if you guys remember, we had to, you know, either wait for our foreign relatives to come from US or we had to go to some shady shop in, um, you know, Majestic National Market. Okay, and get chocolates, imported chocolates over there. Today, every shop, you can find imported chocolate. No restriction. If you want, you can get imported things easily. Alwa. Next, any offenses under this was considered a criminal offense. And all foreign currency, all foreign currency belong to whom? Belong to government. All foreign currency belonged to government and it was a very stringent law where you were guilty unless you were proved innocent so like this if you write it's enough so earlier our external sector was regulated by a law called as foreign exchange regulation act it regulated every aspect of external sector the government had strict control over the external sector. All foreign currency in India belonged to the government. It had to be surrendered. Why? Because there was shortage of dollar during this period, 1970s and 80s. Okay, it prohibited all transactions except those which were permitted by RBI. There was a positive list. Now there is a negative list, meaning certain things are not allowed. Rest, everything is allowed by default. You cannot bring drugs, you cannot bring more than two liters of alcohol, you cannot bring more than one laptop, like that. Other than that, everything is permitted. Okay. Now, so then it was a criminal offense and all that. So in the 90s, as a part of our liberalization process, okay, LPG reforms, we also liberalized our external sector. So one of, we had to borrow money from IMF in the 90s. One of the aspect of the, one of the conditions of the loan was that we are going to liberalize. Meaning what? We will relax the rules dealing with external sector and allow easy flow of foreign currency into and outside also. So what would be the advantage for the foreigners? They can easily bring their money into India and invest money in India. So McDonald's and KFC and Pepsi and all these started to flourish in India during that period because earlier they were not allowed to come and invest. Okay, or they had to take permission before bringing their money and invest. Now automatic it is. No need for asking any permission. That's why you have so many foreign brands, foreign companies coming and opening there. Earlier it was not like it was not allowed to come and invest in India. Okay. Now, rules were more relaxed under Foreign Exchange Management Act. See the difference, regulation and management. Regulation means everything is going to be strictly controlled. Management is you allow it to develop on its own. You intervene only when there is some problem. So here, Foreign Exchange Management Act was enacted as a part of our LPG reform, which relaxed rules in the external sector. Okay. It promoted the orderly development of external sector. Okay. It allowed for convertibility. It allowed for export, import, investments, borrowings, 
more relaxed rules okay it allowed for orderly development of external sector any offense under this law was categorized as civil offense which includes penalty and other things then guilty only after you are proved and then those aspects dealing with money laundering and black money etc it was removed from that law and a separate law was created called as prevention of money laundering act which made money laundering a criminal offense so that part still remains criminal of uh, uh, law so rest of them was made into a civil offense so this is your foreign exchange management act so today external sector is regulated by this foreign exchange management act which aims at orderly development of external sector a healthy development of external sector so that we can promote exports we can attract investments okay we can facilitate our companies by allowing them to borrow cheaply from outside the country okay attract tourism and all that can happen only when we have relaxed rules so this is your fema so today it is regulated by fema under fema only conversion investments and other such provisions are managed so now government does not control everything it only ensures that there is rule based uh, you know develop, i mean rule based external sector is that okay guys